Glory be to your holy name. Father, we bless you. King of glory, we worship you. There is no God like you. We give you praise and thanks for this wonderful time together in your word, in your presence. Father, send your word to us again. We are hungry. We need you more than ever before. In the name of Jesus and God's people said, Amen, amen. You're welcome, Pastor Chuzi here at Glory House Atlanta. This is Command Your Day. And uh, what uh, I always say that, and then God does more than we expect. It's going to be awesome. Trevor 06, you're welcome. Wanda, you're welcome. Johnny Mary, you're welcome. Curly Edwards, Jennifer Avalanche, your favor. Anybody watching? Geneva Bull from Kentucky. Awesome. You are welcome today. Joy Thompson, you're welcome. Johnny Mary, you're welcome. Marie, you're welcome. Jennifer, you're welcome. Yes, awesome, awesome. Curly, again, welcome. Unique, good evening to you. Thank you, uh, Dickiness Ari. It's going to be awesome. AJ Sule, greetings to you. Whatever it takes, whatever happens, we will all survive this season, okay? And Nia Villa, I hope I got it right. You're welcome. Karen, thanks for inviting your followers. DJ Evan, you're welcome. And our destiny is bright. Our future is bright. Thank you for sharing, Curly. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Uh, uh, let's uh, deal with this. Uh, uh, just uh, take care of this quickly. Uh, excuse me, I must have blocked the wrong person. And uh, block. Yes. We block, we block, we block to him, ID10. You're welcome to him. Yes, to Mika. You're welcome. Okay, Professor Mount, you're welcome. Dr. Victor, watching today, you are welcome. We pray for safety for all of the medical professionals, doctors, nurses, all kinds of people. We pray for safety, Father, for them, that you would hide them under your blood in the name of Jesus. And Father, let this thing begin to turn around. It's enough, it's enough. In the name of Jesus and God's people said, Amen. Wonder, thank you again for joining Dorothy. You're welcome. Increase 08, you're welcome, man of God. I'm waiting for family to come on in. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. First Samuel 10, 5 and 6. Tonight we're talking about a unique topic. Prophesy to me, prophesy to me, prophesy to me. First Samuel 10, 5 to 6. After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come hither to the city, that thou shalt see and meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Pastor Joseph, you're welcome. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy. That's another topic. Thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. Wow. A lot of good stuff in this in these two verses. Thou shall prophesy. Is Saul also a prophet? No, Frederica. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thou shall prophesy. And thou shalt prophesy. They shall prophesy. Thou shalt prophesy. They will prophesy. You will prophesy. Is Saul a prophet? No. Is he in the fivefold ministry? No. Anita? No. Is he a, he's just going to be, he's a shepherd. 
going to be anointed a king after he had been anointed in 1 Samuel 9, a part of the signs to confirm that he is anointed now king. Uh, these are some of the signs. And it's uh, very strange. Let, let me just break it down. There are different levels of prophecy. Different levels of prophecy. The first level is personal prophecy. Personal prophecy. You prophesy to me or I prophesy to you. One-on-one -on -one prophecy. That's different. Then there is the corporate prophecy. You're in the church and God gives you a word for the church, the local assembly or a company or business or something that is different. Deborah, that's corporate prophecy. Then you have regional prophecy. Regional prophecy, they say, okay, southeastern part of the USA, or they say south of the USA. Okay, or they say uh, North America. North America is made up of, I, I believe, uh, USA and Canada. Or they say South America. That's region. Or they say Asia or uh, Middle East. Or they say Europe. Uh -huh. Then you have national prophecy where it's targeted toward the nation. The prophecy to nations, to kings, to Ethiopia and Egypt and uh, the Babylonian kingdom and so on and so forth. And then you have the next level, which is dealing with kings and rulers prophecy, kings and rulers prophecy, prophesying to kings and rulers, the shakers and makers of society. Uh, a prophecy to President Trump or the Queen of England, of course, that is for her or for him or for them, those in power and in authority. And then number six, you have uh, what they call them, um, uh, uh, marketplace prophets. Abiola, you're welcome. Marketplace prophets. They profit, they uh, deal with uh, profits that deal with uh, Coca-Cola, uh, Bank America, uh, big corporations. Um, you go in there and you minister to the leaders and they have workshops and seminars and you give you your, there's some profits that are fully anointed. They are in the banking world. Some are in the, uh, in the medical world, some are professors and so on. And then number seven, you have church prophecy. Church prophecy, dealing with the end times, the rapture, the coming of Jesus, the second coming, uh, the 70 weeks and the, uh, uh, the, um, the body of Christ and tribulation and uh, the mark of the beast and all of those things. That is the church prophecy as, uh, as the body of Christ. Uh, for, for our study tonight, thank you, Lord. Let's deal with personal prophecy. Prophesy to me. Let me go live on Instagram right now. Okay, so please share. Chuday is watching. Welcome, Chuday, Chuday, Chuday. Good to see you, woman of God. Tonight, we're dealing specifically with personal prophecy. Prophesy to me. Prophesy to me. You're welcome for those watching on Instagram. We're just welcome. We're live on Instagram, Facebook, and Periscope, okay? Please share as you come on in on Periscope. Swipe and share. On Facebook, please share. Let many, many, as many as possible coming. It's going to be a feast of the Word of God. Thanks for Funke joining. You are welcome. So when they tell me somebody can prophesy, or they are prophets, or they have a prophetic gift, we're on on Instagram. Yes, Bassi, we're on. So when 
when they, they, they say somebody can see or they can prophesy, or they, I want to know do you, where are you are? Are you a, what kind of prophet are you? Glory, favor, you're welcome on Instagram. What kind? Of, do you know what your calling is? Are you called to kings, to rulers, to pastors, to churches, to local assemblies, to rulers? To Well, I don't know. Well, how come you don't know? You're a pilot. Are you called to fly a 747 or a helicopter? Are you called to fly the Navy or the police or ambulances? What is your calling? Well, anything. A job is a job. Mm -mm -mm. With God, a job is not just a job. No, this is serious. With God, prophetic, prophetic is destiny, is, is life is the kingdom, is the king. God doesn't joke with it. He has everything at stake when he raises a prophet. It's not for, for jokes or to just feel something. Yemi Berry, you're welcome. So when we despise, that's why the Bible says, despise not prophesyings. Despise not prophesyings. And of course, don't forget, there are people who prophesy with musical instruments. So let's look at personal prophecy and the benefits of the prophetic gifts and the anointing and the mantle. What does it all do? First Corinthians 14 and 3. You know, I, I, every time I come on, I want to pray and lead you in, in uh, pronouncements and declarations and commandments and st stuff. And then we end up sharing the word of God because the word is everything. Pastor Winnett, you are so welcome. Gogoras, you're welcome. Everything begins and ends with the word. And so when you're strong in the word, nobody can push you around. When they start prophesying or prophet lying, you know that this does not line up with the word of God. When I listen to you, for the first five seconds, maybe five minutes, between five seconds and five minutes, I want to be able to locate you where you are in the world. As soon as you open up your mouth, it's, it, you should be easily located in God's word. Are you a prophet? Are you a prophetess? Yes. What's your calling? Where are you called to? Who are you called to, Susan? What's your assignment? Who are you called to? For example, in, Je in the Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8 to 10, God said to Jeremiah, I have called you to the nations. To the nations. Samuel was never called to the nations. Samuel's assignment, Teresa, was to anoint kings. He was, his business was to anoint kings. That's all. He never went to war. He didn't prophesy much to people. According to the word, the, re, the record that we have. And so when they say somebody is a prophet, I'm listening to know, are you like Joseph? Are you called to Pharaoh? Joseph never prophesied to anybody else but to Pharaoh exclusively. Are you a Daniel who is called to multiple generations of kings? Favor or not, favor or not, I uh, wish I got the full name. You're welcome on Instagram. So who are you called to? Are you called to market women in the country? Are you a traveling prophet? Most times we call traveling prophets evangelists. Okay, so who are you called to? 1 Corinthians 14 and 3. 1 Corinthians 14 and 3. But he that prophesieth speaketh, speaketh unto men. Thank you, Johnny Mary. Speaketh unto men. You cannot be so anointed as a prophet that you prophesy unto animals or trees. The essence of the prophetic voice is to human beings. As a prophet, 
you and I are called to human beings. We're not called to spirits and, and no. He that prophesieth speaketh. That means that the way to prophesy is to speak. The way to prophesy is to speak. Speak on the behalf of God Almighty. Hallelujah. The way to prophesy is to speak. Prophets can write, Isaiah wrote, Jeremiah wrote, Ezekiel wrote, but what was written was mostly what they proclaimed, what they said, what they declared. Am I making sense, people? So the prophetic ministry cannot be gagged or silenced or, or shut down or be uh, 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 mute. Mm -mm. He who prophesies speaks unto men on the behalf of God. So God has, the prophet has nothing in the, in the prophetic ministry. Everything is all about God. God starts it. God gives the message. God gives the anointing, the mantle, the unction, the function, the ability, the authority, and God backs it up. Stacy, you're welcome. Michael, you're welcome. Am I helping anybody, please? So the, the prophet is mainly a, a voice. Is only a voice of the master, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the prophet has no business arrogating him, to himself authority and influence and try to make people think he's some big something that he's not. And it's easy for us to forget to begin to attribute or credit or elevate the prophet beyond his level. He's a human being. When God takes off his hand, the prophet can't. One of the prophets said it this way in the Bible. He said, who can prophesy except the Lord has spoken? In, in Amos 3.7, he said, no, no prophet can speak except the Lord first reveals it to them. Okay, somebody's writing, Pastor Winnet. Yes, because the Bible says that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Let's talk about that for a moment. There is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. Anybody in any time can tap into the spirit of, the pro of, of prophecy in the atmosphere and prophesy and forget that they prophesy. There's a spirit of prophecy. Then there is the anointing of prophecy. The anointing of prophecy comes on people every now and then. They don't prophesy, they're not prophets, but once in a while, they say, thus said the Lord, and they're accurate and precise and on target and on point. So there is the spirit of prophecy. There is the anointing of prophecy. And then there is the mantle of prophecy. The mantle of the prophecy, of prophecy rather, is that power to prophesy that rests on a chosen vessel of God, called, ordained, anointed, planted, raised, mentored, tutored, equipped to be a prophet. The prophet carries the mantle of prophecy. He doesn't need to tap into any atmosphere. He doesn't need to be charged up and to shake and say, G -g 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 G -g 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 no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. He, 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 and, and, and God anoints him, Kim Rawlings, to speak on behalf of God. Now, so there are different levels. Hopefully I'm helping somebody. So when somebody says, I, I prophesy, I'm a prophet. Okay, are you tapping into the atmosphere or you're anointed every now and then? It is easy, or you are a prophet. A prophet is like um, somebody, <laughs> everything he does, Pastor Naomi, you're welcome, woman of God, is, how do I put it? 
even when he says something, God honors it. Uh, a nurse can give medications. Flora, she can give medications. Reverend Emaka, you're welcome. That's a nurse. Isn't this is good? This is good. Okay, thank God. A nurse can give medications. Um, but the nurse is not a doctor. Thank you, Pastor Winnett. A nurse is not a doctor. The fact that a nurse was able to give uh, somebody uh, something and they got well does not make them so. The greater the, the training, the greater the credibility. Prophets are trained. No, prophets are born. And after they are born, they are trained. We read it in 1 Samuel 10. Saul prophesied. That didn't make him a prophet. For his 1 Samuel chapter 10. Most people who are prophets, who have a prophetic mantle or anointing or calling, refuse to be trained in today's world. They don't want to be trained. Well, I'm a prophet. Yeah, we know you have a prophetic gift, but you are not trained. And you can tell that they just go out there and make a havoc and dis just disastrous. Amen. So this is prophetic school part three. Hopefully I'm helping somebody. Amen. Now, at least the basics, since we're still stuck at home, we may as well as well as we may just have a school anyway. Praise the Lord. He, 1 Corinthians 14 and 3, he that prophesieth, speaketh unto men for what purpose? To, for the purpose of edification, exhortation, and comfort. Exhortation, edification, edification to build people up. Exhortation, a little bit of the word of God to point people into the direction of the work. Comfort, Boy, do we need to be comforted at this time. Now, because, now, let me say this too. A prophet can be trained by God or can be trained by men. Thank God, Judith. A prophet can be trained by God or be trained by men. Most people don't want to be trained by nobody. They just want to prophesy wreck a church, destroy people, because they are not trained. Okay, Pastor Chusey, okay, thank you, Tamika, for the super heart. So what do, how, what do we train a prophet in? Oh, Lord. <sighs> okay, let's go there quickly. The first thing you want to train, it, there are a number of them, a number of trainings a prophet must have. First is to have prophetic protocol. Prophetic protocol. That's the first training. The second training is to have to know pro prophetic etiquette. Prophetic etiquette. The third is to know prophetic delivery. Percy, you're welcome. Prophetic delivery. And as soon as somebody has them all, I want them on, on one after the other on the screen so I can run through them quickly. Prophetic delivery. You may, you may be, God may speak to you, but you've got to learn how to pr pr say it. And then number four, you want to be trained on prophetic culture. Prophetic culture has to do with relating with other prophets in the area, in the church, in the sanctuary, in the service, and so on. Please, somebody, wipe a, swipe and share on Periscope. I think this will bless somebody, even on Facebook. Amen now. So how do you, mo <laughs> I wish we had time, where uh, uh, some prophet prophesied, 
and Jeremiah prophesied. And the other prophet, who is a false prophet, walked over and slapped and gave Jeremiah a smack on his face. We say, how can God leave, the Spirit of God leave me to go speak through you? You don't know pro protocol. Prophetic culture. And then number five, you want to know prophetic language. Did I say that? Prophetic language, prophetic utterance. Many of us are anointed, but we don't have prophetic utterance. For example, those who don't have a prophetic utterance, we shake and shake and quake for, for, for half, half an hour. G -g 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 -g. Thus said the Lord. I remember a lady, I've said it, shared it before, a very humor, humorous story. She came to church and she said, you know, every Sunday, this woman is shaking, prophesying. And one day, we just, I just like, you know, today something has to break. This thing is too much. Because <laughs> she has the gift, but no culture. She has the gift, but no on training on utterance. And, and then number six, uh, you have prophetic timing prophetic timing and then number seven we have prophetic management how you manage yourself prophetic management how you manage yourself well every Sunday she, one day I just got so sick and tired of it and then she came and just walked into it and shook 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 and said my children my children thus said the Lord and we're all like yes attentive and she said good morning to you what? Thus said the Lord, my children, my children, good morning to you. <laughs> it's not funny to you, but it's funny to me. Good morning? Okay, so I, I was like, okay, maybe she's trying to say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Good morning to you. And then she sat down. I, of course, I had to deal with the, hey, hello, Kelly Brown, goddess. I had to deal with, <laughs> with uh, prophetic restraint. <laughs> prophetic restraint, okay? So, very important, Ifoma, you're welcome. And we have to deal with prophetic restraint, prophetic discipline. Now, if anybody has all seven on the screen, Put them up so I can run through them quickly and just add one or two lines. Uh, if not, we move on. Okay. Hallelujah. Uh, you're welcome, Amanda. You're welcome. Very important. You know, prophetic. Now, okay, prophetic protocol, how to speak, how to relate, how to present yourself. You're half naked. You're wearing a tight top. You're a prophetess. And we're seeing everything of course, you're out of order. Prophetic edu education, you got to learn about prophets, minor, major, national, different ones I shared with you. Prophetic delivery, how do you put it without hurting people? Uh, prophetic culture, how to relate to other prophets in the area, in the city, in the church, in the sanctuary. Remember, the Bible says the prophet must each prophesy in order. That everything be done in decency and order. Richard, you're welcome. Deborah, you're welcome. So, Amaka, Amaka, you're welcome. So, we have to have prophetic. These are the. Don't just fall for, thus said the Lord. I see you with a car. I see you with a house. I see you with a husband. I see you with money. Now, send a thousand dollars. Now, if you need more prophecy, line up over here. One thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, two fifty dollars. These are the things that don't, don't they, they restrict the Holy Spirit from moving. You may be right, but you're off in the area of timing. I don't know why I got into this. Let me move on. Ezekiel 37 verse 4. Did that help anybody? Amen. Now, of course, there's the other extreme where pastors say no prophecy, no prophet. The church of God in Christ Church of God in Christ, Pastor Ronke, has 6.5 million members. It's a major Pentecostal denomination. Fortune Church, you're welcome. 6.7, 6.5 million members. They had two conferences, one in February, one in March. As of today, 30 bishops of Kojic Church 
are dead due to the coronavirus. 30 bishops gone. Why? There's no prophetic word, no prophetic warning. You want to write those down? Prophetic word, prophetic warning, prophetic alert. 30 bishops gone to conferences in this coronavirus season. God knows how many people were under them, how many people, family, church members of those 30 bishops have been impacted and we don't know yet. When I read it this morning, I just began to cry out to God, please have mercy. You can be anointed, but it be ignorant. So you have prophetic word, you have prophetic warning, you have prophetic alert. So if you want to give me a word, is it, are you warning me? Are you alerting me? Are you educating me? Prophetic education? Are you foretelling me of what's coming? Or are you foretelling me of what God is doing right now? So nobody heard from God in Kojic that, I think like that. Not one person got a prophetic alert, prophetic warning, prophetic restraint. Deborah, prophetic something, a dream, a vision, a trance, alert, an uneasiness, a check in the 30 bishops, gone. Oh, it threw me this morning when I read it. Now, it's one thing to receive and deliver the word. It's another thing you can look for it on Facebook. Go to my page, you will see it. In the USA, 30 bishops gone. One thing is to hear, Jazzy, and another is for those who you are sent to to receive the warning or the alert or the restraint or the blessing. There are people who had prophets and prophetic ministry, whatever, anything, P-R-O-P, I don't want it. I've been to churches where they said to me, you can preach, do not prophesy one word. Danny, you're welcome. So it's one thing, that that's where prophetic culture comes in. Because the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. If you go, they said, they don't want you to prophesy. Sure, I preach. Oh, we don't, I've been to churches, I mean, I, <laughs> They say, don't speak in tongues. Well, you can speak in tongues. Do not minister baptism of the Holy Ghost to people. Sure, fine. But the people, if they, if you, if, <laughs> I mean, you can lay hands and pray for people for healing, for deliverance, for miracles, but do not minister baptism in, in tongues to them. But if, Oh, God, have mercy on the church in the name of Jesus. Ezekiel 37, 4. Well, what happened, Pastor, you want to know what happened? What happened was that in that church, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard the pastor say one time, don't prophesy because it gives people hope. Yeah, I've been in church. I was prophesying. They tapped me on the shoulder and said, stop. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, being to the church, many churches, they said, do not prophesy. Don't say, tell people about nothing. I said, why? I asked the pastor, sorry if I may know. He said, because he makes people too excited. Too excited. That is the, uh, the, the fortune telling, the predictive part of prophetic word. In other words, the prophetic word that sees ahead the good news part of the prophetic word makes people too excited, the pastor said. So I asked him, 
How about hope? How about the word? How about encouragement? How about prophetic warning? How about prophetic alerts? How about prophetic protection? How about prophetic deliverance? How about prophetic prayers? How about prophetic uh, uh, favor? How about prophetic miracles? How about prophetic acts and demonstrations? It's not just about telling people what God will do, that I see you with a car, I see you with a house, I see you with money, you're going to have that baby. How about the other parts of the prophetic ministry, come on now, that have nothing to do with telling me how blessed I'm going to be. Folks, my point in a, indirectly is that we do need prophetic ministry. We need prophets and prophetesses in the body of Christ. Our prayer is that they will allow God to train them. Training, training, training. How long... Oh, God. I had an usher. I said to him, you have a prophetic mantle. Serious one. But you cannot go out now. You give me three years of your life let me train you with the little God has given me. I'm not saying I'm a major prophet or small prophet or minor prophet, but I, I seem to <laughs> I seem to know a little bit about this thing. Yeah, somebody's writing. Your sister suffered many years as a prophet. Don't let anybody, please hear me clearly. Do not let anybody install you in any church as your job being a prophet or prophetess. They're killing you slowly. There's no professional prophet. Pauline, you're welcome. Instead, become a teacher of or preacher of the word of God first. Once I see somebody with a big title, prophet, prophetic dance, prophetic dancer, prophetic preacher. I had one lady tell me she was a prophetic pastor. <laughs> prophetic pastor? You have a church? No. But you call yourself a pastor. And then uh, Pastor Daisy will remember this after service. She will go gather members, church members, phone numbers. And then she would call them and ask them to come to her prophetic fellowship every Saturday. And they would go there and she would tell them, don't listen to Pastor Chusey. He's not a prophet. He can't see. He can't hear. He don't know nothing. I am a prophetess. Yeah, you remember the story? Yes. And one day I called her. I said, Lord, what do I do? The Lord said, kick her out of the church now. Expel her. And boy, did I do it so reluctantly. Because, you know, pastors love people. You just want the church to grow. And then you have goats and, and sheep and, and donkeys that you have to restrain. And horses you have to restrain. And donkeys you have to pee, pee, push. Looks to me sometimes that the church is like animal farm. <laughs> okay, Pastor Don says she had to kick her out. They may have a good gift, but they are not trained. Prophetic culture. Or if you can make notes from what I'm sharing today, it will help you. It will help you to guide your sons and daughters, your somebody around you. you I, I pray that somebody will make these notes, send them to me, I look them over and we publish them maybe on Facebook. So people, we, somebody has to begin to bring order by the word of God, by this kind of solid, clear, Holy Ghost inspired training. So because they don't know, they think that I'm a prophet. No, no. Jeremiah just didn't wake up one day. I'm a prophet, start prophesying. No, don't do that. Elizabeth, you're welcome. So we need training. 
I don't know if I'm the one to train you. I am just sharing what God gave me to you because people don't want to be trained. If I say to you, after the coronavirus shut down, shut in, I want 30 people to travel to Atlanta and spend uh, a week with me. Seven days. And every day we do morning, afternoon, noon session. Three sessions per day for seven days. They will not. Oh, I got work to do. I can't come. I can't afford the ticket. Um, I cannot. Um, I'm too far away. And they need. Now, all of us are home. Mavis, we're home. Whether you can afford it, whether you want to, ready or not, some are working from home, some are sitting at home. So you can make time for what you wish to make time for. Anyway, Ezekiel 37, 4. I keep calling this scripture, never get to it. I'm going to get to it right now. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them. Prophesy and say. And let me say this. Nobody is going to lay your hands and say, receive uh, prophetic unction, prophetic mantle, prophetic anointing. Now start prophesying doesn't work that way. They can transfer the gift or the anointing, but you don't know about protocol. You don't know about prophetic control. You don't know about prophetic language, utterance, and so on. Amen now. You cannot escape training. That's why somebody should give God praise that you're hearing this type of training on social media. Glory be to God. Thank God for that. Hallelujah now. And he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say, prophesy 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 and say unto these dry bones. Dry bones. Sometimes God can put you as a prophet or prophetess in a dry place. And you're prophesying and it's bouncing back and it's dry and nothing is happening. The bones are dead and dry. But you've got to stay with it. In other words, there's prophetic fidelity or fidelity, prophetic fidelity, prophetic fidelity, staying integrated and connected with your caller and your maker. You make up your mind, you will be answerable to your father, to your caller, to your anointer, to those one, the one who sent you. You must prophesy by faith. You go by the word God gave you not by what you think. Am I giving you so many words and phrases? One day God asked me to tell a woman that your tubes are healed. I've shared the story before. She came up to the front and said, Pastor, I'm going to get married. Pray for me for divine supply and that everything will go great. She comes up to me, I start prophesying, I open up my mouth to pray, and I begin to prophesy. I said, tubes be healed. Tubes be healed. She said, Pastor, excuse me, tubes? Yolanda, you're welcome. I'm asking you to pray that the wedding go well, or goes well, or that it will go well. What has tubes got to, what have tubes got to do with my wedding I, I i tried again so you you that is prophetic yielding 
prophetic yielding, prophetic yielding, prophetic submission to the flow. It will come in waves. It will come again. Then, since I, where I, need, uh, I see people like this, there's a prophetic pregnancy, prophetic conception and pregnancy. You can get pregnant. You can carry a word for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. It's in you. Every time you see that person, you remember it. Every time you hear that person, you remember it. So there's prophetic yielding. There's prophetic conception. There's prophetic pregnancy. That thing will be on you. For example, I have had the word since 1997. 1997, this is 2020, well, 2020, yes. I've had a word for a woman of God called Juanita Bynum. Juanita Bynum. I've been in meetings where she ministered, never met her. Since 1997, I've had a word for her. Pastor, can't you write her? Can't you look for her? Any prophet that starts to struggle to deliver a message from God is no more a messenger. If God called you, he will open up the platform and the opportunity to, for you to speak. It's called prophetic gestation. Prophetic gestation. You can be pregnant. Since this is 23 years, I've had a word for Juanita Bynum, and I'm never going to look for her. One day, when it's time, hopefully on this side of eternity, <laughs> God will make it possible. Amen now. Glory be to God. So, there's somebody watching. They're saying, Laura Thompson, they, they say, uh, uh, okay, okay. If God called you, he will open up. Yes. Now, somebody saying, I wonder what Pastor Cusy, oh, maybe Pastor Cusy, are you pregnant with any word from me? Tell me now. Don't be pregnant now. Give birth now. <laughs> but, he, but he was thinking, <laughs> thinking like that. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Joel 2, 28. We, okay, there's a prophetic hearing. Prophetic hearing, there's prophetic sensing, prophetic hearing, prophetic sensing, prophetic seeing. Most prophets do not hear, they sense it, or perceive it, or hear, or feel it, or just the, the, the sharpening of this ability to hear. So when the prophet says, I hear, he's not talking about hearing in their physical ears, but hearing with their spirit. Sometimes I don't hear, I don't see, I don't feel anything. Like I told you the other day, I have a, an urge. Or sometimes I have a feeling. Uh, if I am ministering and I begin to feel a headache on one side, I don't have a headache. I know it's for somebody. So there's language, prophetic language, prophetic language, prophetic language, prophetic expression, prophetic expression, knowing how to interpret what you see. For example, you you see uh, somebody, uh, you said, thus said the Lord, your name is Jane. I see you missing a flight. I see you at the airport and you get to the airport and I see that you've missed your flight. And the person says, huh? Oh, you must be a false prophet. I am not planning. I'm traveling. I'm traveling. I ain't got nothing to do with the airport. No, this guy is off. I'm not traveling. I don't plan to travel. I don't have a ticket. I'm not going nowhere. And you call the person a prophetic, a, 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 a false prophet. But he's right. Now, 
the prophet has to know the symbols, the signs, the pictures. If somebody misses their flight, what does that mean? As a prophet, you are supposed to know that God is saying they should do everything right so they don't miss the rapture. So they don't miss heaven. When Joseph was with Pharaoh, see how you see how that exploded? Missing a flight has nothing to do with Delta Airlines <laughs> or United or British Airways or Emirates. No. Somebody is a pastor, I keep seeing myself in the exam halls, I keep taking tests. I keep taking exams. Pastor, I keep taking, I don't know why. I'm always in exam halls. Or, no. It's, you're not going to take no exam. It's not any test. The Lord is saying, prepare, for there is a test of destiny. There is a temptation. There's a shaking. There's a test that is going to come. And if you do the right thing, prayerfully, stay with the word, stay in fasting and prayer and all of that, that season will pass. You feel me? And after every test, there's a promotion to the next class. Okay, sir, what does it mean when I, you see yourself pregnant in the dream? Seeing yourself pregnant in the dream can be because God wants you to get pregnant in the natural. If you're married, you're believing God. But primarily, primarily and basically, pregnancy in the dream is talking about birthing, spiritual birthing. Spiritual birthing. See? Prayer that has conceived that thing. In other words, you pray through. The thing has been conceived. Now, praise through, pray through, praise through, go into prayer. Before Zion travailed, she gave birth. You're pregnant. Now, use prayer to give birth to that thing. Am I helping anybody? How did I get into this? So, most prophets are not trained. When Joseph saw the king, Pharaoh, he said, no, the butler said uh, he was carrying a basket. The fellow knew what, uh, Joseph knew what he meant. He said the basket was on the head of the uh, baker. Bread was on the basket, in the basket. It was on his head. Okay. That means your destiny, your assignment. And there was bread in it. The word of God, ministry. But birds were eating the bread out of the basket on the head of the baker because Joseph has been trained in symbols. He knew exactly. He said in three days, Pharaoh is going to cut off your head, period. He didn't say the bird, go check it in Genesis. He didn't say the birds were eating the bread out of the basket. He said the birds were eating the bread from his head. Oh, be your welcome. From his head, not from the basket. <laughs> okay. And then the butler said, okay, I also had a dream. And this, I was holding Pharaoh's cup, assignment, calling to the high king. And he was restored. Well, let me give you another one. Joseph had a dream. In the dream, there were sheaves, bundles of sheaves, 11 of them. And they bow down to his sheep, the 12th one. Joseph knew in their culture, a bundle of sheaves or sheaf represents a person. He knew, his father knew, his brothers knew that the sun means the father, the moon means the mother. He went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, seven cows. In that culture, a cow means one year. And he had seven. Another seven leaned 
attack the seven fat cows and consume them. So David, Joseph knew immediately that there will be first five, seven years of abundance. They will be followed. They will be followed by seven years of scarcity and you know and all that and so on. So he he was successful. Most of us don't want to. When Daniel was called, he said the king had a dream and there was a handwriting on the wall. Daniel knew immediately judgment. Judgment. Daniel didn't need to know that this king was idolatrous and crazy, drinking with holy vessels from the house of God. Of course, you think God will write, oh, I'm pleased with you, my beloved servant. No judgment. Get rid of him. So there's also the prophetic audacity and prophetic courage, prophetic boldness. Some of them get so bold, they get dramatic, they over-dramatize, they get a little spooky and crazy. But it's better that you're full of the Spirit and you are drunk in the Spirit and you obey than you are. I'm giving so many prophetic words and so on and so forth. Okay, so... Ah, all right, let, let me close. Let me just, so Matthew 7 and 8, Matthew 7 and 8, one of the things you must learn is how to receive the prophet first before the prophetic word is delivered. Matthew 7 and 8, for everyone that seek, ask it, receive it, and he that seek it, find it, and to him that knock it, it shall be opened. Matthew 7 and 8 how to respond to the prophetic word, Joy Thompson. How to respond. How do you respond? How do you respond? How to respond to the prophet? Most of us in today's culture, we hate prophets. Once you hear this, thus said the Lord, oh, he's after my money. Oh, all these prophets, all these men of God. Oh, yeah, I knew it. Oh, yeah, all these fine teaching. I knew he was going to go bend the word and raise our offering. <laughs> So we have to be trained on how to receive. How do I receive them? Re release your faith. Release your faith. Number two, believe that this person is from God. Number three, judge it, discern it. Don't just fall for it. Number one, release your faith. Number two, receive the messenger. Number three, receive the message. If those three don't fall in line, then throw it off. We're not trained. The fact that somebody used a Honda to go rob a bank does not mean that every other person who has a Honda car should get rid of it. There are bad prophets. There are good doctors. There are bad doctors. There are good doctors. There are good prophets. There are bad prophets. There are bad people. There are good people, period. My prayer for myself and for you is that God, whenever he wants to speak to us or intervene or perform a miracle or give us a blessing, that God will give us the spirit, the tenacity, the humility to receive and to sense the right person. I tell them in Glory House, we may be joking around, we may be fooling around, we may be rolling on the floor, we may just hang out, but don't forget, that there is something else on me apart from humor and fooling around and clowning around, and it is the holy anointing oil of God if you receive it and understand it and relate to me like that. My wife knows I'm her husband. She knows when I switch over to being a prophet. Hello, princess. And she knows when I switch over to being her pastor. Most Christians were not trained. You just, oh, he's a man. Not every man of God is the same. I keep telling you people. But we're not trained. A mother can be a wife to her husband, different title, different unction, different anointing, and be a mother to her children, different unction, different anointing, and be a grandmother to her grandchildren, different unction, different anointing. Hello, Germany. You are welcome, Princess Larry. 
different anointings. I'm not helping anybody. But we don't know. The worst thing you can think in your heart, oh, they're after my money. Oh, they're after my money. <laughs> no man can receive anything except it's given to him from above. Am I helping anybody? Okay. So you've got to now by yourself discern who this guy is. Is it sheep or is it a lion in sheep clothing? You, let me say this, please write this down. It is your assignment to discern every prophet that comes your way. Every man or woman of God. It's your assignment. If you fail, it's your. It's on you. You don't blame the Lord. You don't blame the Holy Ghost. You don't blame any pastor. It's your fault to be taken. You release yourself to be fooled and sweet talked, and they talked you out of your money or car or house, or they told you to leave your husband or wife or something, and you fell for it. It's your fault that you didn't seek out knowledge and understanding and insight. I pray that somebody will watch this teaching today and all of this week we've been dealing with it so much that it's in your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Let me hurry. I have uh, a very short time. Um, th there's, uh, um, so let's close with that. The prophetic, how to receive it how to respond. It's your assignment. It's left to you. Let me stop there. Uh, we, I don't have time to tell you the other things that they prophesied to me. Why should I desire a prophetic word? Let's close with that. Let me shut up this iPad because it's so good. I probably have gone halfway. Another time we'll pick it up. How do I deal with a prophetic word given to me. Most of us don't know. They give you a prophetic word. I see you with a husband. I see you with a Bentley. I see you with money. I see you, Joseph. You're going to rule and be the prime minister in Egypt. La, 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 la. And you dance home and scream and shout and fall out and tape it and take it home and put it somewhere. Why should why do I need a prophetic word? What do I do with it? Pray it. Type it out. Write it out. Play it. Pray it. Declare it. So for it. Oh, Pastor Tuesday, I knew you were going to talk about sowing. No, no, no. Please hear me clearly. Write it out, declare it, pray it, play it, insist on it. Remember, war a good warfare over your prophecies. Yeah, Pastor, but I've been praying. It has not come to pass. Remember what he says? Habakkuk 2, write the vision, make it plain. Though it tarry, it shall surely come to pass. If it is God, who gave it? But what do we do? Uh, honestly, if I say this, please hear me. With, with I, I appreciate prophetic words, but I, I'm not too. I'm not too excited about receiving a prophetic word anymore. It used to make me crazy. I would fall out. I would ride, you know, just roll around. You should see me running around the church and screaming in the 90s. And early. No, no. I did not know that every prophetic word has warfare attached to it. War, a good warfare over the prophetic word that has been given to you. When you're giving a prophetic word, honey, maybe nobody told you warfare was also activated. 
I hope you know that. If you didn't know it, slap yourself and anoint yourself and receive it. <laughs> Every prophetic word brings war. War, a good warfare, over the prophecy that has been gone on you. Paul was telling Timothy. So don't just say, well, God said I will have a car. That's why you don't have it. Immediately a prophetic <laughs> Somebody said, wow, I'm slapping myself. But when a prophetic word goes forth, you better know that there is, the devil will fight it. So if we knew, you can say a thousand, you can say a million dollars. No, devil don't care. You, you better get into, yeah, somebody says serious fight. Hallelujah now. I hope I'm helping in somebody. Let me get you this scripture. I know it's in Timothy, but I like to be precise because you never know. War a good warfare. First Timothy 1 and 18. First Timothy 1 and 18. Let me read it because somebody may be driving. Verse 18, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, on thee, on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. <laughs> Holding faith. We didn't know about 19th verse. Holding faith and a good conscience. Most of us, after a while, our conscience is messed up, bitter, nasty, angry, vengeful, resentful, doubtful. He lied to me. Which some, having put away, man, this is not from God. It cannot be from God. They throw it away and make a shipwreck of their faith. Shipwreck. When somebody, when they, you know, the people who come to our church, all these people, they start prophesying. Ah, I'm like, oh, Lord, I, I ah, thank you for your word. But, Lord, I have enough warfare. <laughs> Amen now. Pastor Tuesday, I see you. Oh, the, oh, thank you. I'm very careful to say amen. I have a minute and 58 seconds on. Instagram, thank God for you for watching. And I hope I blessed you some way. Let's get our bread. And even if it ends, Father, bless the bread. We break it together. For Jesus said, take my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Receive the body. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He break it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Receive it in Jesus' name. Please eat. I will chew and talk because of time. After the seminar also, he took the cup and blessed it and said, Take, drink ye all of it. This is the cup of the New Testament, which is shed in my blood. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we receive the life, the power, the healing, the deliverance, the immunity, the protection, the covering, the prophecy activation in the blood of Jesus. Anybody who has received a prophecy and is delayed and is hindered, obstructed, diverted, suppressed, let the blood of Jesus bring an activation. And Father, we believe you tonight by the blood of Jesus for prophetic activation, prophecies, unctions, mantles, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, prophetic restoration, prophetic promotion, prophetic enlargement, prophetic seeing, hearing, prophetic surrender and yielding. Let the spirit of prophecy invade the church of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you may now drink. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, almighty God. We give you praise. We give you glory. Man is so strong here. We exalt you.
in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your people that anybody who is caught up in any form of intense warfare, no matter how subtle, how intense, how huge, let there be deliverance. Let the prophecies no more be hindered, held up. Anybody who has been a target in the center of the storm of a prophetic word that caused you a form of setback and you began to wonder if God really meant what he said or, or said what he meant, let the cobweb, let the veil be removed. Let there be a performance. Let there be clarity. Let faith arise again in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do not weep. Do not cry. Every time there is a loss, God will give you double for your shame. No matter what happens, the prophetic word will come to pass. Okay? God bless you. Thanks for watching. If you're not born again, say, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Father, I pray for your people that their weeping season be over. Save their souls, heal them, deliver them. There is no loss in God. Mm -mm. There is no loss in God. This God that we serve, there's only profit and plenty in him. What may look like a loss or a delay or a denial or a, 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 some form of abortion or miscarriage in the physical or natural or financial or in the relationship, mm -mm. nothing happens to a child of God except God permits it. So let your faith, let your hope, let your spirit come back alive. If you're not following me on Instagram, please follow me. And I do upload some of these teachings now. I started doing them every night as the Lord gives me grace on my page on YouTube, okay? Pastor Chusey on YouTube. A lot of Command Your Day uh, broadcasts have been documented, archived there, okay? Thank you for watching. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget, it's not over. Until you win, thanks, Ari. Thanks, Wanda. Thanks, I'll prevail. Thank you, Dorothy, David, Reverend Amaka. Thank you, woman of God. Wanda, thank you. I didn't get to say hello to some of you. Deborah, thank you. Eva, highly favored. Thank you. DJ Irvin, thank you. Pauline, thank you. John, four fee, double seven. Thank you. I'm sounding like a radio DJ. <laughs> Trevor, oh, six, thank you. God bless you. And uh, keep winning. Humble servant, thank you. Curly, thank you, thank you. All of you, our family, thank you. Diane, thank you. Prophetic Point, thank you. Laura, thank you. Thank you again. Euphemia, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nuni, zero one, thank you. Okay, Judy, thank you. Dorothy, thank you. I cannot thank God enough for you. Michelle, thank you. Tashi, thank you. Don't forget to pray for those grieving, mourning, uh, dealing with stuff during this season, okay? Thank you so much, Obi. Thank God for you. Deborah, thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. It's not over until you win. Bye-bye for like it. Thank you, thank you, thank you.